I have come to the Polish capital of Warsaw to tell a remarkable story of bravery and humanity from 80 years ago. This historic city was the home of Irina Sendler, the so-called Angel of the Ghetto, who saved the lives of some two and a half thousand Jewish children during the Holocaust. Such was the humility of Sendler that it is only relatively recently that the full extent of her courage has become widely known. Germany invaded Poland on September the 1st, 1939, starting a chain of events that led to the Second World War. The Jewish population in Poland was soon victimized. In Warsaw, they were forced into a ghetto that was sealed off from the rest of the city. Some 400,000 Jews lived in terrible conditions in an area of little more than a square mile. At the outbreak of war, Sendler was a 29-year-old social worker. She realized that Jewish children in the ghetto would die with their parents unless something was done to save them. Sendler, who was a Catholic, obtained a permit to visit the ghetto on humanitarian grounds, which enabled her to smuggle in food, medicine, and other supplies. However, soon she was smuggling out something as well, children. Babies were sedated and taken out in bags, baskets, toolboxes, suitcases, and even coffins. Older children were smuggled out disguised as non-Jews or taken through the city's sewer system to safety. Parents had to be persuaded by Sendler it was better for their children to live than to die. Those youngsters taken out of the ghetto were secretly placed with families in the Aryan part of the city. In 1942, the Polish Council to Aid Jews, Czigota, was established after the transportation of 280,000 Jews to the Treblinka extermination camp. Under the pseudonym Yolanta, Sendler by then head of the organization's children's section and her loyal team of some 20 volunteers, provided forged documents in new names for more youngsters to be sent to orphanages, convents, and foster homes. Sendler kept the real names of all the children in the hope they could be reunited with their parents once the war ended. These were written on pieces of cigarette paper and hidden in glass jars. On October the 20th, 1943, Sendler was arrested by the Gestapo and questioned about the missing children. She was brutally interrogated and tortured, but revealed nothing of their whereabouts. Sendler was sentenced to death on January the 20th, 1944. On the day of her execution by firing squad, the Polish resistance bribed a prison guard and she escaped. With her freedom, she continued her secret work. Elzbieta Fitzowska was six months old when she was smuggled out of the ghetto, sedated in a toolbox, never to see her birth parents again. She was raised by a Catholic family and only learnt of her miracle escape, age 17. Now, aged 81, she treasures the silver spoon engraved with her Jewish name and birth date that was put in the toolbox for good luck. Mikhail Gowinski was only eight years old when he escaped the ghetto hidden in a car. Po prostu Irena, tak jak bywa jedyną Ireną na świecie, i mówiło się z kultem. 
zaangażowała się w nie, niezwykle wcześnie i niezwykle skutecznie w, w, ratowanie, w ratowanie Żydów uwięzionych w gettach. Ona robiła to w czasach, kiedy w Polsce na ten temat się milczało. Bohaterka, osoba niezwykle odważna, niezwykle ofiarna, osoba o temperamencie działacza społecznego. After the war, Sendler worked for the Polish Ministry of Health, but because of her modesty, she received little recognition. However, she remained in contact with many of the children she saved. It was only in the twilight years of Sendler's life that the full details of her courage finally emerged. She died in Warsaw on May the 12th, 2008, aged 98. Beside me is the grave of Irina Sendler, which is situated in a famous cemetery in the center of Warsaw. Her story is not just one of courage, but of the extremes of human brutality and kindness too. Today, Sendler's legacy is the two and a half thousand people that she saved, along with their children, grandchildren, and future generations. Yet she refused to accept that her actions had been heroic, saying, heroes do extraordinary things. What I did was not an extraordinary thing. It was normal.